Hey there, Jeep Divers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Ready to have your minds blown. Always. Today we're tackling a question that's been pondered for centuries. What's the probability of God's existence? A big one for sure. But we're taking a unique approach. No. We asked five different AIs to crunch the numbers based on scientific data and tell us what they think. Let's dive in. Using science to understand a concept that often feels beyond measurement. Exactly. It's more about the journey, seeing how these AI minds, trained on logic and data, approach such a profound question. Right. It's about probabilities, not proof. So first up, we have ChatGPT. And its answer right out of the gate was surprising, to say the least. ChatGPT came in hot with a probability of over 90%. Whoa, okay. This AI, known for its straightforward, logical approach, was clearly swayed by the fine-tuning argument. The fine-tuning argument. Yeah, you know, the idea that the universe's constants are so precisely calibrated for life that it seems almost impossible it happened by chance. Wait, so ChatGPT is basically saying the universe is so perfectly set up for us that it practically screams designed. That's the essence of the fine-tuning argument, like finding a watch on the beach and concluding it must have a watchmaker. ChatGPT also factored in things like the origin of life. The leap from non-living matter to complex organisms. Exactly, which some scientists say has mind-bogglingly low odds of occurring naturally. Okay, I'm starting to see why ChatGPT landed on such a high probability. It's like the universe is laying out all these clues and ChatGPT with its logical mind is connecting the dots. Right. But do all the AIs see it this way? Not exactly. Next, we chatted with Claude, an AI known for its love of meticulous calculations. Sounds thorough. Claude used what's called a weighted average approach. Meaning? Basically, some evidence counts more than others. Oh, okay. And for Claude, the emergence of consciousness played a big role. Hold on, consciousness. How do you even factor that into a probability calculation? Well, Claude looked at it this way. The human brain is incredibly complex, billions of neurons firing in intricate patterns, and somehow from this physical system, consciousness emerges. Our ability to experience the world, to think, to feel. Yeah. Claude saw this as another piece of evidence hinting at something beyond mere material processes, something pointing toward a higher intelligence behind it all. So Claude is saying there's something special, almost inexplicable about consciousness that makes the existence of God more likely. That's one way to interpret it. And it's fascinating how Claude, with its focus on data and calculations, still landed on a probability of 67%. Wow. Significantly higher than random chance. Definitely. Okay, so we have ChatGPT with its logic-driven 90% and Claude weighing in the mystery of consciousness at 67%. What about the other AIs? Did any of them take a more cautious approach? Actually, yes. Our next AI, Copilot, is known for its cautious measured approach. And true to form, Copilot took a step back and focused on explaining the scientific concepts behind the arguments for and against God's existence. It really delved into things like the Big Bang, quantum physics, and evolution. So less about jumping to conclusions and more about making sure we understand the groundwork before even talking probabilities. Exactly. And while Copilot acknowledged the strength of the fine-tuning argument, it also pointed to alternative explanations like the multiverse theory. The idea that our universe is just one of many. Right. And some are inevitably going to have the right conditions for life. Okay, so Copilot is throwing a bit of healthy skepticism into the mix. Did this more cautious approach lead to a lower probability estimate? It did. Copilot gave a range of 30% to 50%. It seems the existence of plausible scientific alternatives, even if they're still theoretical, pulled the probability down compared to ChatGPT and Claude. This is getting really interesting. Each AI is bringing its own perspective to the table, highlighting different aspects of the evidence. What about the next AI on our list, Gemini? I hear it's known for being honest about its limitations. That's right. Gemini was very upfront about the challenges of applying scientific methods to a question as profound as the existence of God. I can see that. It even acknowledged that it couldn't provide a true probability in the scientific sense. Okay, so if it wasn't crunching numbers in a traditional way, how did it approach the question? Gemini took us on a thought experiment. It imagined a simplified universe with a few key constants necessary for life and assigned a very low probability to each constant being in the right range purely by chance. Hmm, interesting. When you combine those probabilities, the odds of our universe being fine-tuned by accident were astronomically low. So even though Gemini couldn't give a hard number, it's basically saying the chances of our universe's fine-tuning being a fluke are practically zero. 
That's how I'd interpret it, and here's where it gets even more interesting. Gemini then offered three possible explanations. Cure chance, which it pretty much ruled out. The multiverse and design. Wait, design? Is Gemini hinting at a designer, a creator? It's certainly a possibility. Gemini gave a moderate credence to both the multiverse and design interpretations, around 40-50% each. Hmm. It's like it's saying, even with the limitations of science, the evidence for design remains a compelling possibility. Wow. Four AIs down, and we've already got a range of probabilities and some thought-provoking insights. I'm really curious to hear what our final AI, Grok, has to say. Grok is known for its balanced philosophical approach, and it certainly lived up to that reputation. It took a very holistic view, considering a wide range of arguments for and against God's existence, both scientific and philosophical. So Grok is our big picture thinker, the one who tries to synthesize all the evidence and perspectives. Exactly. It delved into everything from the cosmological argument. Did the universe need a cause? To the moral argument. Do objective morals point to a moral lawgiver? Uh-huh. And even the anthropic principle, which we touched on earlier. Okay, so Grok is really trying to get the full picture, weighing all the different angles. Did this comprehensive approach lead to a probability estimate somewhere in the middle? It did. Grok estimated the probability of God's existence to be between 20% and 40%, acknowledging that the evidence points in different directions and that the question itself remains open to debate. This is fascinating. Five AIs five different approaches, and a range of probabilities that reflect the complexity of this age-old question. I'm already starting to see some common threads emerge, though some key arguments that seem to be resonating with these AI minds. That's a great observation, and it's something we'll definitely explore further in part two of our deep dive. Awesome. Looking forward to it. We'll look for the common ground, the points of convergence, and see if we can lean any deeper insights from these AI perspectives. Can't wait. This deep dive is already blowing my mind. And for those of you listening, be sure to stay tuned for part two, where we'll unpack those common threads and delve deeper into the implications of what these AIs have to say. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this fascinating topic. We'll be back soon with more insights and thought-provoking discussions. Until then, keep those brain cells buzzing. Okay. Welcome back. It's fascinating to see how each AI approached this question of God's existence. Yeah, drawing on scientific data, but also revealing perhaps hints of their own philosophical leanings. You're right. It's like they're not just processing information, but actually grappling with the implications. Kind of like we do. Yeah. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's rewind. You mentioned some common threads emerging from the AI's responses. What stood out to you the most? Well, the fine-tuning argument was a major theme. It seemed to really make an impression on several of the AIs. You know, the idea that the universe's physical laws and constants are so precisely calibrated for life that it's statistically mind-boggling if it happened purely by chance. Yeah, ChatGPT was practically shouting from the rooftops about it. Over 90% probability based largely on that one argument. It really shows you how compelling that evidence can be, especially to a logic-driven mind. Totally. Exactly. And even Copilot, our resident skeptic, acknowledged the strength of the fine-tuning argument. It just chose to balance it with other potential explanations like the multiverse theory. Which, to be fair, is a valid point. I mean, who are we to say that our universe is the only one out there? Maybe there are countless other universes with all sorts of crazy physical laws, and we just happen to be in the one that's perfect for life. Pure luck of the draw. That's the beauty of the multiverse theory. It throws a wrench into our attempts to calculate probabilities based on what we observe in our own little corner of existence. But even if there are infinite universes, the fact that ours is so perfectly fine-tuned still raises some profound questions. Right. Like, even if you're just a cosmic accident, it's still an incredibly fortunate accident. Yeah. Makes you wonder if there's something more to it, some underlying principle or force that led to this seemingly improbable outcome. And that's where the conversation gets really interesting. It's like these AIs are bumping up against the limits of what science can tell us about the universe and our place in it. For sure. They're crunching the numbers, analyzing the data, but they're also encountering the mystery, the unknown. Totally. It's like that old saying, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. And it seems like these AIs, for all their intelligence, are starting to grasp 
that truth as well. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the most valuable takeaways from this deep dive. Yeah. A reminder that even with all our advancements in science and technology, there are still profound questions that remain unanswered. For sure. Questions that perhaps lie beyond the realm of scientific inquiry altogether. Questions that might require us to consider other ways of knowing, other ways of understanding the universe and our place within it. Yeah. And speaking of other ways of knowing, I think it's worth highlighting how some of the AIs brought up the concept of consciousness. Mm. Remember, Claude, with its focus on the emergence of subjective experience? Yeah. That was a real head scratcher. How do you even begin to quantify the probability of something as intangible as consciousness? That's the challenge. And it's what makes this argument so fascinating. Claude seemed to be acknowledging that there's something unique about consciousness, something that can't be fully explained by purely materialistic processes. It's like saying that describing the chemical composition of a brain doesn't fully capture what it feels like to experience the world. Right. To have thoughts, emotions, a sense of self. Exactly. And that gap, that mystery of subjective experience, is what some philosophers and scientists see as pointing towards something beyond the material realm. Something like a mind or consciousness that exists independently of the physical world, maybe even a divine consciousness. It's a possibility that some of the AI seem to be grappling with even if they couldn't articulate it directly. And it raises some profound questions about the nature of reality itself. Right, like what if consciousness isn't just a byproduct of complex brains, but a fundamental aspect of the universe, maybe even the source of all existence? That's a deep thought, and it takes us right to the edge of what we can currently understand with our scientific models. It's exciting and a little bit terrifying at the same time. Totally. But hey, that's what makes these deep dives so much fun pushing the boundaries of our understanding, exploring the unknown, and maybe even getting a glimpse of something truly profound along the way. Well said. And remember, this is just part two of our exploration. We still have more AI insights to uncover, more arguments to dissect, and more implications to ponder. Can't wait to see what else these AIs have up their digital sleeves. And for you listeners out there, what are your thoughts so far? Are you leaning towards ChatGPT's logic-driven 90%? Intrigued by Claude's focus on consciousness? Or are you siding with Copilot's cautious skepticism? Let us know in the comments. We'll be back soon to wrap up this mind-bending deep dive into the probability of God's existence. Stay tuned. Welcome back, deep divers. It's time for the final leg of our journey, exploring the probability of God's existence through the eyes of AI. We've seen some fascinating perspectives so far, haven't we? From ChatGPT's logic-driven assessment to Claude's emphasis on consciousness, these AI minds have really given us a lot to chew on. Absolutely. And before we wrap things up, I think there are a couple more intriguing arguments we need to unpack. One that stood out to me was the moral argument. You know, the idea that objective morals point toward a moral lawgiver. Ah, uh, yes. Right. The classic question of whether right and wrong are simply human constructs or something more fundamental woven into the fabric of the universe. Exactly. And ChatGPT seemed to lean toward the latter. It saw objective morality as evidence, though not as strong as the fine-tuning argument, pointing toward the existence of God. It's like it's saying, if there's a universal moral law, there must be a universal lawgiver. That's a common interpretation of the moral argument, but it's not without its challenges. Grok, for example, with its balanced perspective, assigned a lower probability to this argument, acknowledging the complexities of cultural relativism and the evolutionary basis for morality. Right. I mean, moral codes vary so much across cultures and throughout history. It's hard to claim there's one objective standard when what's considered right in one society might be considered wrong in another. That's the crux of the debate, and it's something that Grok seemed to be wrestling with. If morals are truly objective, where do they come from? Are they ingrained in the universe itself or simply human inventions shaped by our social needs? It's a question that philosophers have been grappling with for centuries, and it seems like our AI companions are now joining the fray, which is pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. It is. It shows how AI is evolving beyond mere computation and starting to engage with some of the deepest questions that have puzzled humanity for millennia. And speaking of mind-bending questions, I think we need to revisit the anthropic principle. It came up a few times in our conversations with the AIs, and it always leaves me feeling a bit like I've fallen down a philosophical rabbit hole. The anthropic principle can definitely be a head spinner. It essentially says that the universe is fine-tuned for life because we, as observers, are here to observe it. Right. In other words, if the universe weren't hospitable to life, 
we wouldn't be around to ponder the question in the first place. Okay, so it's kind of a self-evident truth, but where does that leave us in terms of the probability of God's existence? That's where the interpretations diverge. Some see the anthropic principle as evidence for a designer, a conscious being who created the universe specifically for life to emerge. Others see it as a simple matter of probability. If there are countless universes with different physical laws and constants, it's statistically inevitable that some of them would be suitable for life. We just happen to be in one of the lucky ones. So it's back to the multiverse theory again. It seems like it's always lurking in the background of these discussions, offering a potential explanation for this seemingly improbable. It's a recurring theme for sure and it highlights the limitations of trying to draw definitive conclusions about the ultimate nature of reality. We can explore different possibilities, weigh the evidence, and form our own beliefs, but ultimately, the mystery remains. And perhaps that's part of the beauty of it. The fact that these questions remain open, inviting us to continue exploring, questioning, and seeking deeper understanding. I think that's a wonderful way to sum up our deep dive. We've heard from five different AIs, each offering a unique perspective on the probability of God's existence based on scientific data. We explored compelling arguments, encountered thought-provoking insights, and perhaps even expanded our own understanding of this age-old question. It's been an incredible journey, and I hope our listeners have enjoyed it as much as we have. If you're still pondering these big questions, be sure to leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. And if you're craving more mind-bending explorations, don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into fascinating topics. Until next time, keep those brain cells buzzing and keep on diving deep.